Dan Abbott, I'm making this video for my AEDD 250 class, Mechanical Design at Southern Maine Community College. You have an exercise that requires you to place certain kinds of features on a drawing and then to dimension them um, properly. I'm making the video in AutoCAD to show you how you could approach that process using an AutoCAD, making an AutoCAD drawing. Another one on how to do this with SolidWorks, but in AutoCAD we're going to be drawing in two dimensions. So. I've got the uh, assignment up here just so you can see it. If I look at it, not a bad idea to just start it the way it shows with the rectangle. Now these are blanks, <clears throat> but if I say I want that to be at 3.5 comma 1.25, that'll give me the rectangle representing that part. If I do another one, and this one probably my best approach would be to just draw a line that went down through the middle like that. And we're going to draw that line and make it so it goes horizontally like so. So for this next one, rather than draw the rectangle, I'm going to offset half of 0.75. little point of interest, apostrophe C-A-L, allow you to type in a formula so I could divide that, although, of course, I know and you know what it was. So that one comes up here. This one comes down here. And I'll do a little trimming, clean that up, get rid of this. Now the... Um, length of that, I didn't draw that any particular length, the length of this, well, six. So what I'll do, I'm just going to explode this since I'm going to have to break it anyway. So I'll offset six and bring this over here. Now there are other ways to do this. Um, as long as what you have when you're done is correct, that's fine. That's just the blank now. So if we start over here at A, it says A should have, let's move this a little bit closer so it says that a there should be a chamfer chamfer is going to show up just show you what this would look like in SolidWorks as long as we are doing it so this is what we would create in SolidWorks now you're going to have to put a little more information on because you have to actually show where the neural goes but there's a chamfer on one end the handle is um, consistent diameter all the way until it gets to that taper. Taper comes down at a 1 to 8 taper, but it's a circular taper. There's a square undercut. There's a series of holes that are radially arrayed around the end. There's a radial undercut for that thread. <clears throat> that thread comes in from this end. So that's where we're going. Although, again, you're drawing this in 2D, but if you did it in SolidWorks, this is what it would look like. So now, we're going to put the chamfer on here so we can show what that looks like. And I'll do that by drawing. Actually, I'll do that in this case by saying put a chamfer in there. So the distance it's given as, come back out, distance is given as 0.1. And the second distance is also 0.1. So we'll go here, we'll go here, enter, here, and here. <clears throat> as far as the drawing goes, once you have a chamfer, you also have a hard edge. So we put that line in like that. Now, if I were to offset 1.2, I'm going to offset this over 1.2. That's where that taper has to start. <clears throat> so the taper has to go here and come down. Now, it's a circular taper. And a circular taper of a 1 to 8 means that over 1 inch of length, the diameter of the taper gets smaller by 1 eighth. That means that the line coming down here is going to be 1 16th of an inch below as it goes over to the 1. So if it gets smaller by 1 8th as a diameter, it, this goes down by 1 16th because it's on both sides. So the easiest way to draw that is just to do it by going at 1, comma, negative 0.0. Zero, six two five, which is a decimal equivalent of an eighth of an inch. Now it comes down at the right taper, but because this goes 1.2, it's not quite long enough. All you have to do is extend that. Now we'll trim this out, get rid of this, mirror that right around the midpoint. Oh, well, I can't use the midpoint of that line. Mirror that right around that midpoint. Bring it over here like that. Go back into the trim command, get rid of that. So now you have a trim with the right taper. In this particular case, unlike SolidWorks, where you can put an equation in, you could, well, you could actually put an equation in here. But if you made it longer, 
this taper is still the same taper. That I would do using the parametric tools under parametric, but let's, um, let's not do that. Um, so now you have an undercut right here. The undercut is given as a, oh, the diamond neural. What we're going to do for the diamond neural, which is 1.2 from the left end, offset 1.2, you're going to have a line here. Now in AutoCAD, you're going to either draw in a neural, or you're going to call out a neural that's between those two places. I'm going to show you how to do a neural pattern, and that neural pattern is what you would normally have here. Now, um, the undercut. The undercut is, that's this thing right there. An undercut, in this case, a square undercut, means that the width of the undercut is given and the diameter at the bottom is also given. So the width of the undercut was given as 6.16. So that's how wide it is, and the depth at the bottom is given by the diameter at the bottom of 0.45. So we'll offset 0.16, bring that over here like that. There's my undercut goes. And we'll just trim that out like so, trim that out like so, trim this and trim that. Now, <clears throat> the bottom of this has a diameter of, let's see if I try to, maybe I should move that. So we'll move this so it's here instead. That might work a little better. There we go. So <clears throat> the bottom of this is it got a diameter of 0.54. So what I can do here is just say, well, let's do a little line right there. Let's offset that half of 0.54. Again, you don't have to do the math on these things in your head. Apostrophe CAL brings that up. 0.54 divided by 2 gives me half of the diameter that I want. Bring that up here. Bring that here. Get rid of that. There's my undercut. Now on the other end, we have another type of chamfer, but it says it's 30 degrees by 0.1. So we'll go back into the chamfer command. This time we want to know the distance and the angle. So we'll make a distance of 0.1 and we'll make an angle. Well, let's do the angle first. The angle is 30, the angle is 30 degrees. So the distance on the first line is 0.1, and the angle is 30 degrees. So now, if we make our first line that one, and our next line this one, it's going to go back at the right, in the right direction. Then we'll do this, well, we could either do that, or we could have just put in the same chamfer here. And then connect those two things with the line, because that's what it would look like when you do your drawing. Oop, went a little too far there. And, oh, I, you know, I, I messed this up because I picked the lines in the wrong order. Let's get rid of that. We'll go back to the chamfer command, but I have to pick the first line is the distance along, and the next line is the angle, so it would look like so. Now, there's another undercut here, and the other undercut is 0.75 back. So I'm going to offset 0.75 just to get something there that I can see. And now the undercut is going to be radial. So it's going to come down and look kind of like that. That's too big, though. Oh, I thought I was drawing it. Drawing. For a minute, I thought I was drawing in SolidWorks, but I'm not. I'm drawing in AutoCAD. So what I need to do is put a circle here, and I want that circle to have a diameter of... Nope, I wanted a radius, so I could have just typed that in. 0.1 is the diameter of that hole. So now I'm going to move that down. I'm going to move it down until the bottom of it has a diameter of 0.60. So in this case, and there's a couple other ways you can do this, but we'll just draw another construction line here. If I offset that line half of the diameter, which would be 0.3, that's how far down it has to go. So now I can move this. move this from that quadrant and put it right where that intersection is. <clears throat> That's how deep it has to be. Now we're going to do the trimming first. I do not need that anymore. So the trimming is going to be done by putting a line at the quadrant and going straight up because that's the way it would come out when we go in. 
another one at the quadrant going straight up. Now we'll do the trim command and clean all this stuff up here. That's the shape we want right there. Now we're going to mirror that feature right around that line there. Also trim this out here. And you're going to have a line that goes from here down to here. And another one that goes from here down to here. So that's what it would look like as a two-dimensional drawing. Now the drawing itself is complete. So now you can go ahead and bring it into paper space and set up a layout and add your dimensions. But there is a possibility of a hatch pattern over here. And the only trouble with that hatch pattern is that Auto, uh, yeah, AutoCAD does not have a true neural hatch pattern. It has a diamond pattern, which could work, but it's not a true um, hatch pattern because the hatch pattern would have 120 degree angles and the diamond pattern has a 90 degree angle. So there are some things you could do with that. One of them is to put in two hatch patterns that are essentially um, the ANSI pattern but rotated so it comes in at 120 degrees. And the other thing is you could write your own hatch pattern. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I have a video on how to create a hatch pattern in AutoCAD and also how to create a hatch pattern in SolidWorks. So it'll give you a true diamond neural. But just to give you an idea, I'm going to do is create a hatch pattern in AutoCAD. And normally you don't neural the entire area. So I'm calling it off right here. So I'm going to start by saying I want to do a hatch. And I want that hatch to be here and here. Now this is at a 45 degree angle. So what I'm going to do, let me see, I think what I'll do is do user defined. So now I have it as user defined. The distance should be about an eighth of an inch, or maybe we'll go 0.1. And then the angle in this case, we want the angle to be 30 degrees, so it's at that angle right there. Now I'm done with that, and I will do another hatch pattern. And once again, I'll go and just pick that point right here and that point right there. And this will also be user-defined, but in this case, the angle, instead of being 30 degrees, it's going to go all the way around to 150 degrees, so it looks like that. Now that would be the true diamond neural hatch pattern, and you get rid of those things. So you see it's got that diamond on it that is not a square. It would look like that, and if you do one corner up here and one corner down here, that would give you what you want. Now the other thing is, those lines right there, but not those lines or those lines. Those lines that I just picked over here should be object lines. The hatch pattern itself should be thin, so that should be on a hatch layer. But this is everything you need in order to actually then do the dimensioning properly. To do that, you've got to go look at that reference, at the ASME reference that I gave you, and use that reference to correctly put the chamfer, the neural, the taper, circular, the square undercut, the hole pattern. Oh, did I put a hole? I didn't put the holes in there. The radial undercut and the chamfer on the other side as specified here. Now, as far as the hole goes, you can do a circle, put it right here, and have it go back 1.2. Diameter of that circle is... Uh, 0.189 looks like that and now you could do you use that to create your hatch your uh, hidden lines etc the only other thing is it was threaded now a threaded line you're going to offset through and say take that line offset it through here take this line offset it through there and then that would be a hidden line that would be a hidden line these others would be object lines that would be a hatch pattern line so you should have your template that you created in your last AutoCAD class, but I'm just going to go to layers here. And in layers, I'll make a few new layers so I can use them to put things in place. Oh, first I went to the command line version, so I decided to make it easier for you to see. So I'm going to make a new layer. So we'll call, have a layer called object. We'll leave it black. I'll make the line weight. Um, we'll make it 
Now I'll make another new layer, and I'll call it hat for hatch. I'll give that a different color just so we can keep track. And that's going to be the actual 0.25. That's going to be the default line weight. I'll do one more, and this one we'll call hid. We'll make that a different color. Let's make that blue. And then the line type on this, we're going to change the hidden to. So I'm going to go over and load from the ACAD LIN. If that says ACAD ISO, then you're in a metric drawing, not a drawing done in inches. Hidden to is the one that always works the best from my point of view. I should say usually works the best. So now I'm going to take all of those things right there, and I'm going to put them on the object layer. So I'm going to take those lines with so that hatch pattern there. I'm going to put that on the hatch layer. And I'm going to take those two lines right here and put them on the hidden layer. So now when I turn line weights on, oh, I didn't get, I, I only got one of the hatch patterns here because I forgot that I used two different hatch patterns just to show you what it would look like. So now that goes also in the hatch layer. There we go. So now, you know, you could do the whole thing in here, but normally that's what you do in a large area. So what you're looking at is this. Now, obviously, you also have to have center lines, etc. And you go to the layout, you can place those in. And when you plot it, make sure you do monochrome so everything comes out as a dark line. But that's where you're headed with AutoCAD. You might need another view. You might not. That's up to you. Lay it out correctly. Everything has to be done correctly so your final drawing meets all the standards.